Hello YouTubers, this is your friendly neighborhood Theophage. Christian YouTuber Evangelical One has been busy making a whole bunch of videos regarding evidence that Christianity and the Bible are true and reliable. I haven't watched them all yet. To be honest, his style makes it a little bit hard to get through for me. But I encourage you all to go to his channel and check them out. Recently, Evangelical One posted a video titled Call to YouTube Atheists where he is asking us non-believers to give our best arguments for atheism for his consideration. Now as many of you, and I hope Evangelical One himself is aware, there is a burden of proof issue here. Non-believers in the Christian God no more need to give argument against gods than those who don't believe in garden fairies need to give arguments against them. It is sufficient simply to show that arguments in favor of a god are flawed, and that is enough to make athe atheism a reasonable position. But where is the fun in that? I do plan to do a series of videos pointing out how the arguments for theism and Christianity in particular are flawed, so be on the lookout for those. But recently, I sent Evangelical One an argument for the non-existence of God by private messaging, entitled, The Argument from Suffering. He then made a three-part video as a rebuttal to that argument. Again, you should go to his channel and check those out. Unfortunately, I don't think his rebuttal was in any way successful, and that is the topic for this video. In the first video of his rebuttal, he reads my entire argument as I sent it to him. I'll quickly summarize it here for those interested. Premise 1. If God exists, he is an omnipotent and omnibenevolent being. Premise 2. If an omnipotent and omnibenevolent being exists, suffering would not exist in the world. Premise 3. Suffering exists in the world. Subconclusion. Therefore, an omnipotent and omnibenevolent being does not exist. Conclusion, therefore, God does not exist. Now the only really controversial bit is premise two, which is essentially, if the purpose of suffering is to allow some greater good, then since God is omnipotent, he can find a way to achieve that same good without using suffering. And since he is omnibenevolent, he would want to do it without using suffering. This is where I expected Evangelical One to try to show the flaw in my reasoning. But he seemed to be satisfied with beating a big old straw man instead. Here's what I mean. For those of you familiar with atheistic arguments, you may have noticed that this argument is similar to the problem of evil, which is another argument often offered to show that the existence of God is incompatible with what we observe in the world around us. The standard response to the problem of evil is the free will defense, which basically says that God allows evil to exist because he also allows free will, and the evil that exists is a direct result of humans exercising that free will. But I chose the argument from suffering rather than the problem of evil because philosophically it is a simpler argument. The problem of evil usually involves arguments about morality and how we define what is evil and what is not, and also arguments about free will and what that philosophically entails. The argument for suffering simply deals with the concrete and relatively non-controversial area of suffering. Free will doesn't even need to enter into the discussion at all, since plenty of suffering in the world comes from natural causes, like diseases and disasters, having nothing to do with humans being free to behave in evil ways. So how does Evangelical One choose to rebut the argument from suffering? First, he inexplicably equates suffering with death, saying that death is necessary in Christian theology, and thus implying that suffering is just as necessary. And then, he proceeds to treat this argument as if it were the problem of evil, and predictably invokes the free will defense. For those of you keeping track, the straw man fallacy is a logical fallacy where instead of the argument given by your opponent, you argue against a different argument, and then you claim to have successfully rebutted their original argument. And that is exactly what Evangelical One had done there. Specifically regarding death. My argument does not reference death at all, only suffering. This is an important distinction because not all suffering leads to death, and not all death is preceded by suffering. Thus, whether or not death is necessary, it makes no difference in whether or not suffering is necessary. Since not all death is preceded by suffering, it is certainly logically possible for death to exist, but suffering to not exist.
So this bit of his rebuttal fails, even if it were correct. With regards to the free will defense, it is interesting that he seems to have read straight from a response to the problem of evil, when he says, and I quote, When examining theism for internal self-consistency, we need to include all the relevant data. The coexistence of God and evil may not be possible in all cases, but it may be that it is possible perhaps in certain cases. Did you catch that? The coexistence of God and what? We aren't talking about evil here. We are talking about suffering. Even if I grant that free will is a successful defense to the problem of evil, which it isn't, but that's something for another video, not all suffering in the world stems from the evil action of humans. Natural disasters such as earthquakes, volcanoes, hurricanes, tornadoes, and tidal waves cause plenty of suffering, as well as diseases, parasitic infections, and things like droughts and famines. Free will does not even enter into these cases, and is thus not an adequate defense for the suffering they cause. So this bit of his rebuttal also fails. In conclusion, then, Evangelical One, even though your rebuttal has utterly failed and the argument from suffering still stands, please don't give up. Please try again, but this time, ditch the straw men and actually critique the argument I gave you. Suffering and death are not equivalent, and human free will has nothing to do with the suffering caused by non-human sources. Get those bits right, and we'll see if your new rebuttal has any merit. As for any other YouTubers out there who want to try their hand at refuting this argument, please watch Evangelical One's first video, entitled Atheist Call, Contra Theophage Part 1, where he reads my entire message and my original support of Premise 2. That should help you get more of an understanding of where I'm coming from. Then, try to refute it intelligently and put your responses here. I'd love to see them. Thanks.